Welcome to Knobcat Games Dungeons of the Obelisk podcast. I'm your host, Joe Sleppy. I'm Executive Prime at Knobcat Games. Uh, this podcast is an audio devlog where we get together every two weeks and we talk about stuff that's happening here at Knobcat and our new and our game that we're working on, which is uh, Dungeons of the Obelisk, a 2D turn-based dungeon crawling loot grinding adventure. And I'm joined today by our digital alchemist. TJ Adesernia. Hello. And our brand new Sage of the Obelisk, Brittany Darby. Hello. So, yeah, I guess our first matter of business is is getting to know you a little bit, Brittany. Um, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, I'm Brittany. I'm a mom of two little ones that are kind of wild and crazy. Um, I've done marketing for the last six years and... Um, was transitioning into the games industry towards the beginning of this year so it was awesome to be able to meet you joe and start working on this project yeah and it's awesome to have you (laughs) yeah marketing can be a lot there's a lot of different aspects to it i'm still trying to finish wrapping my head around all of the different kind of things that we have up in the air and rolling right now from the website and press kit and social media stuff it's a lot but your team has done like an amazing job so far and they've made my job really easy with all of the assets and things that have been created so it's it's been going pretty smoothly (laughs) yeah it's awesome um you've already like taken over the uh instagram and twitter so you've you know if anybody's been paying attention the most recent posts were things that you created Mm mm-hmm yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's sort of sort of hard to talk about, I guess, just like the marketing. It's not quite like the uh, game updates where we have, you know, things that have happened. <laughs> yeah. You know, I really liked some of the, the video that you made where you were, you know, creating your character and talking about it and stuff. I'm hoping that we have a lot more content like that, too. Yeah, I've got some more videos planned coming up pretty soon. Um, I'm trying to kind of blend them in with some static posts just so we can spread out content a little bit while I'm working on other things. But um, I'm actually really excited to kind of get into the Discord a little bit more and start being more active in there and seeing if we can start having some more interaction with, with some of the folks that are already a part of that group. Yeah, that'll be that'll be really awesome. I've been trying to think of ways to interact in there, but I've just always been... I don't know I guess like introverted I'm not good at just jumping into chat rooms even if they're my own you know my own discord server I just like always never know what to say you know I feel like um I like getting in there and answering people's questions and stuff like that but you know drumming up conversation is not my not my specialty so I'm excited to see what we can get into Yeah, absolutely. And it can be definitely tough, especially when you're kind of in the pre-release phases, when you're just kind of talking about certain things, not trying to reveal every little detail about the game. But um, I I mean, as soon as this release, I'm sure there's going to be tons more kind of questions coming in and conversation about gameplay and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's hard to have questions and, and talk about something that you haven't gotten a chance to play yet. So I definitely understand you know, why it's slower in the Discord right now, because, you know, what are you going to say about a game (laughs) that you can't play yet? So there's a lot of, like, previews and stuff that we can give, but, you know, I think, like you said, whenever we get into people actually playing the game, I think it's going to, it's really going to pick up there, but we got a little while until that happens. On the subject, I, I personally don't really have any social media, but... I was looking at my brother's Instagram thing because he was looking at our, I guess, Instagram account for it. Mm -hmm. I was surprised to see, like, how many people uh, follow us. I think it was, what, at least a thousand? Something like that? Yeah, there's a pretty good following on there. 
Yeah, we can thank Nika for that because I think she took over the Instagram. I don't remember when, but she took over and I think there was only like a hundred people or something on there at that point. So she really did <laughs> get on there and and start talking to people and, and you know, adding other game devs and things like that. So that's all that's all her because I've been running the Twitter and I think there's only like a hundred people on there yet. So <laughs> for a little while me and Nika were like neck and neck at with followers on the Twitter and Instagram, but then she just like blew me out of the water. <laughs> yeah, she's done an amazing job. I've even been taking time to like go back through some of the stuff that she's done too, you know, just to kind of see where you guys were at beforehand and, and what was working for you. But no, she's done an awesome job at Instagram. Instagram can be a tricky one, but once you figure out those hashtags, then you are like good to go. Oh yeah, that's that's probably my main problem is I never use hashtags on anything. So I don't know. Probably should look into that for like my own music and stuff. I've had, you know, 120 followers on Twitter for like 10 years, so not really done very good with that front, but that's that's why we brought you on board for the game <laughs> for for a little while we were going back and forth and deciding you know when was the best time to bring on a marketing person and if we wanted to do that or if we thought we could you know split it up and and handle it ourselves but we ultimately decided that we needed you <laughs> yeah i'm glad to help and hopefully i will continue to be of, of much help with this so I'm excited to see this game come out. I'm excited to see people play it and, and kind of hear feedback. Oh yeah, speaking of that, you've just had like your first experiences with the game too. Like I, I'm kind of curious, I don't know, I guess just your overall thoughts and, and you know, your first experiences jumping in and playing for the first time. I think it was a really fun game. I enjoyed it a lot. I keep um, pulling it up in the background when I work on different things just so I can keep leveling up my character. I'm trying to not use dev cheats and and level up my characters without putting in work in the dungeons for sure. But I, I think it's really fun. I think once you can like really see people in town and, and have those interactions, that'll add a whole nother, a whole nother level to the game. But um, I keep hitting a wall around like level six. So I'm just trying to get past that wall and then we'll be good. But I haven't spent too much time doing like the scrapping and salvaging of stuff. So I need to, I need to do a little bit more of that. But I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. As long as I can stick to one character and stop going back, deleting my character and going back <laughs> to just rebuild and look at all of the stuff that there is in that panel. Yeah, that is my problem too i always end up like having to restart for like testing and stuff you know i want to go through the tutorial elements again and stuff so i always end up deleting my characters when they get get going but i think it's going to be awesome whenever it's a final game and and you can keep a character forever like you're supposed to mm -hmm. and just so you know uh, you, you may be noticed but you can buy the transmog scroll in town so if you need to change the look of your character you can buy that and use it oh i didn't know that okay that's gonna make life so much easier <laughs> right on yeah it's uh the scroll of transmogrification in the in the emporium and then you can you know in the um in our dev version you can just buy crystals you don't have to spend the real money and then and then you can buy those scrolls and redo your character as you need to if, if you want to change your look and stuff nice but uh, yeah, saying that you're hitting the wall around level six is actually kind of interesting because that's kind of how I planned it. Like, I think level six is where the first time you see the uh, Sludgesaurus or wait, is it the Sludgesaurus or the uh, no, <laughs> you'd think I'd know all this. I think the that level six is the first time where you start having elites. So so the blub will actually be pretty tough in level six but yeah i kind of had it so that you could get through the first you know level one's supposed to be you can go there and and test stuff and mess around and like you're never gonna die you know unless you go in naked or something but then you know two three four like it's it's like stage where it you can 
almost just go one right after the other. Okay. But by the time you're getting to level six, you're starting into the grind. You know, the game is about like grinding for loot. So level yeah. six, um, five and six, that's kind of where you start where it's like, okay, I'm probably going to have to go through this level like six times. And then level seven is, you know, about seven times, you know, and that's kind of how I had it planned. You know, and, and of course there's always the RNG, like if you go in there and drop a whole bunch of rare items that roll really good, you can go a little faster. But yeah, for the most part, that's kind of how I wanted it to work, I think. So that's that sounds good. <laughs> At least it's working the way you want it to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it's not like a wall, you know, it's not supposed to be a wall, but it is supposed to be like you start, you know getting a grind going and getting into some tougher enemies so yeah challenge is always good <laughs> yeah it can't just be super easy on my occasional testing where i don't cheat i can probably say that it's it is around level six where you start to notice like hey you gotta start to think about how do you play make sure you have proper gear on what kind of stats do you got by that point yeah, and I am not very good at keeping a balanced character right now. I just kind of like pick what I think looks cool and that's not <laughs> that's not the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Another feature that sometimes it's so hard in this game. Like I'm noticing that people don't always notice stuff in the game. So have you noticed the wardrobe? Yeah, but it doesn't do anything when I click on that button though. At least not the last time I was in game. That's not a good sign. Yeah, that's not a good sign because the wardrobe should be open to you immediately. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you're supposed to be able to click on that wardrobe and then whenever you go in, anything that you have owned, you can use as a cosmetic. So, you know, if you have the legendary helmet but you want to use, you know, the rare hood or something, you can you can do that. You know, your, your character should be able to look however you want it to even with the best gear equipped. Oh, okay, that is sweet. So we'll have to figure out why that button's not working. <laughs> Heck yeah, because running a dungeon is, is a lot of fun, but I'm here for the gear. Style over function. <laughs> yeah, that is one of the points of the game, I guess, is like collecting all the cosmetics and stuff, I think is something that people will enjoy, you know, and then just being able to make your character look the way you want. But I'm wondering if there should be like tutorial elements where maybe a loon tells you about the wardrobe once in a while. <laughs> it's so hard to tell because I don't want to like hold people's hand, but at the same time you don't want them to miss out on important features too. Yeah, I mean if there's an option to throw something in settings where you turn off tutorials though, that's always helpful. I'm always one to be like, yeah, handhold, throw those extra little features and details in there because... <laughs> I was such, I was so bad when I first picked up games. My partner was like the most patient person with me, otherwise I would not have gotten this far, but no, those little extra, extra helpful hints are fun. They're nice to see. Yeah, I never know what extent of uh, hand-holding people really need in a game, because like most of the people I talk to, they play games all the time, but then they'll come to me and they'll say, oh, what does this perk do? And I'll have to respond the usual, did you read it yet? <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's right there. The game tends to explain some things if people read into it. I mean, obviously with this one, there's... Like, unless you click on the wardrobe and you start messing around, you wouldn't really know what is it, what does it do kind of deal. You know yeah. what? I think the first time you click the wardrobe button, she should pop up and explain what it is. Yeah, I think that's, that's probably a good... You know, that way, if you don't hit the button, <laughs> then... Then, uh, you know, you haven't gotten there yet, but as soon as you're like, huh, what's this wardrobe on my profile, <laughs> you know, then then she tells you what it is. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. Could consider putting that into some other things if needed. Just gotta figure out what do people, like, what do they instinctually know each thing does and what do they have to learn it in, like, a small tutorial. Yeah, I can see how that would be tough to navigate because everybody's skill level is a little different. Everybody's learned from different places and those different things. Yeah, absolutely. This game is kind of like uh, sort of geared towards like hardcore players that like to grind for a long time. 
like like myself so a lot of those players are used to these kinds of games like diablo and stuff but at the same time there are people who maybe this is they want to see if they want to learn how to you know grind for gear it's definitely a tough balance to strike yeah, I definitely think it's like an attractive enough game that you can probably pull some some people from both of those fields and, and have no issues. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I always say that I think people are just going to see the artwork, <laughs> you know, Ben's artwork and Nike's animations and want to play. I think mm -hmm. that's what's going to make it that initial clicking on it to see what it's about. I definitely say good art and like a good initial view of the game can make a pretty big difference. Like there's definitely games I've played where I wouldn't have thought to play it if it wasn't for the fact that it looked good at first. Yeah, definitely. Like judging a book by its cover. Yeah, so I think sometimes I think about that saying, and it's like kind of like you can judge a book by its cover because the cover should have been designed to let you know what the book is about. <laughs> like that's what the cover is for. It's supposed to catch the eye, pull them in quick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we also have our little uh, slogan, I guess, for the game, too, that's been on everything. You know, the 2D turn-based dungeon-crawling loot-grinding adventure. So I think that that has been saying what it is pretty well, too, this whole time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's super catchy. Super catchy to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you start out, like, normal, and then by the end of it, you're like, you get into it. Yeah, it gets a little intense. I like it. <laughs> kind of like the game because when you first get in there it's kind of easy going build your character pick up your your gear get off in that first dungeon and, and then it gets a little wild yeah absolutely that's that's kind of one of the design goals as well was to keep it you know easy to get into your main stats and stuff are you know are pretty self-explanatory you should be able to kind of jump in and start playing and then after a little while you're like getting legendary gear and grinding for specific things and looking for you know crit chance on items or something and you know so it's supposed to start out like oh yeah this game's super easy and then like after a little while you're like oh yeah this there's like hidden depth to it <laughs> Yeah, some skill may be required here. Yeah, let's uh, let's maybe skip on to our next topics, which are the few updates that that TJ had this this um, past two weeks. We got into some Steam APIs and started on some stuff with that. So there's actually achievements in the game now. So I wasn't sure if that was something we were gonna have. You know how difficult it was gonna be to like add them in. But it seemed not too bad. Um, it seemed like you got them in pretty quick, TJ. Yeah, they definitely weren't as bad as I was originally expecting. Unfortunately, Steam is designed for C++ and Unity uses C Sharp, but some person on GitHub had like a ready-to-go supported version for Unity of all the Steam API, along with a guide on how to do the achievements and uh, stats that you can put in as well. So I feel like I kind of lucked out with that one. Whoever that person was that basically just guided me along the way of getting that feature in. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm definitely a fan of achievements in most games that I play. I like to go for every achievement on it. And since I'm on PlayStation, I go for like the platinum trophy that comes with it at the end. So I'm glad to start getting achievements into this game. Always feels good to get them. Yeah, that's a really good point. I never really hunted for achievements myself, but I think the achievements and then um, I think eventually like when we add bounties to the game, like I think those will be kind of the same vibe as well, you know, where you can go hunt for a specific mob or something to get like a little bit of rewards in game. So they kind of act the, as the same kind of uh, loop, <laughs> play, play style loop, I guess. It's like Given the player a unique reward, or a reward in general for completing certain tasks. I know that always gets certain people to play it, it's kind of a reward loop. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we haven't really talked about that much, but I definitely want to get bounties in the game at some point. I, I didn't think it was necessary for the MVP, so I don't think they'll be in there at launch unless, unless maybe we talk about it and decide it would be pretty easy to do. <laughs> but 
we've always had that like you know find a blue glove or something you know we have like a glove that's just a different color you gotta hunt for him for a little while um you know or kill so many of a specific mob or something and then you get like you know some counterpart tokens or something like that i like that that's a fun aspect of the game all these like little extra quests We'd have them on like the bulletin board in the middle of town, I think. You know, so you go there and see what your bounties are for the day, and then go do them. <laughs> see if you can get them cleared out. The idea of a bounty is always nice. I feel like, and I know some games don't do this too well, is balancing out the, I guess, risk versus reward kind of deal of it. Like, how hard is it? What kind of loot do you get? And the general annoyance of picking it up. Because I know some games, like, you have to go through the process of going through your loading screen, get to a certain area, walk over to the object to pick up the bounty, and you gotta turn it in after you're done by going back. It's just kind of slow, and certain players don't want to go through the slower process for meager rewards. Yeah, that's a good point. We'll definitely have to think about it. It would be nice if, like, you go to the bulletin board, see what the bounties are, but then once you like complete them, you just automatically get the reward for them. And like it pops up, you have completed this. Maybe we need a mailbox or something. <laughs> Give your player a little house. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're gonna add a house right now. Not not quite yet. <laughs> but uh, I think I think a mailbox would be. Um, you know, on the left side of the screen might be something we need to think about at some point. Baby steps. <laughs> yeah, then we could send players rewards like, congratulations, you played a full year. Here's a, here's a free piece of loot. Yeah, for sure. I definitely want to do like events and stuff eventually. You know, like, people love like holiday events and then of course like we'll have a you know, the birthday of the game event, I guess like an anniversary or whatever of, of launch and stuff like that. So, you know, that's definitely stuff I want to do, you know, even if it's just like a specific cosmetic or something like that, you know, and then it's always nice to get like a gift or something for holidays and things. So I don't know. We'll have to have Ben decorate the town for, I don't know. What's the equivalent of the Christmas holidays in Topia? <laughs> I got one for you. You can have a uh, Glubmas. Yeah, there's just glub decorations everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'm a sucker for seasonal stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I really like getting, um, you know, holiday uh, cosmetics and stuff so like you know around Valentine's Day or something you get like a little diaper for your character and a bow and arrow and stuff <laughs> that kind of thing um, speaking of the cosmetics and stuff we actually the the other update that you did this week was uh, we updated the tailor so that it kind of shows a few more options and then we started Ben working on a uh, exclusive supporter pack Co set of cosmetics which are all going to be like based on the glove I guess and it's it's turning out really good so far I'm not sure when people will get to see that but it's definitely something to keep an eye out for on our social media <laughs> yeah that one was really cool I got a chance to look at that this morning I will say that set was a lot cooler than I kind of expected I don't know what I imagined when I pictured the glove pack I think I guess like a glove mask and you're all green looking, but he made it look significantly cooler than I would have imagined. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite things about this making this game is is coming up with an idea, telling it to Ben and then just letting him go nuts on it. <laughs> he he really like designed some awesome stuff, you know like all the legendary items and stuff i i gave them like a little bit of direction for each of them but you know for the most part those designs are really all his <laughs> and and with that glove he really like went wild with the armor and stuff i think it's going to be a cool i think it's definitely worthy of the supporter pack status you know that something expensive like that is going to is going to be Oh yeah, it'll be really fun to see it animated too. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely like when Nika comes back with her animations, they're always, I, I don't know, like, like you were saying, I don't know what I had in mind, but when she finishes them and, and submits them there in the Discord, it's always like, I don't know, mind blowing, I guess. But yeah, I guess we just hit our uh, 30 minutes on the recording, and as you know, all know, I don't like to edit any more than that. So I think I'm going to wrap this up unless unless anybody has something else they want to talk about. I think I'm in the clear. <laughs> right on. In that case, if you've listened to the end of this podcast, then thank you so much for your interest in our game. And if you've made it this far and you're not in our Discord that we've been talking about, definitely go to knobcat.com, uh, join the Discord, check out the videos and some of the older blog posts and things that have been in there. I really should start doing that again, actually, writing some stuff for the blog, but I've not had any ideas. Maybe we could brainstorm some ideas of stuff that I should write about Brittany. <laughs> yeah, we can do that for um, sure. But yeah, there's there's a bunch of uh there's a bunch of back content on there and stuff and and you're working on the new updates for it. So, you know, knobcat.com bookmark it. And then of course, we have the Instagram and the Twitter which are both at Dungeons Obelisk and there's going to be so much more cool content coming out on there that you're going to want to follow. So, definitely hit that. And with that, I think we'll see you in two weeks. Bye. See you. Bye.